Fire is a complex phenomenon that can create serious dangers to life and property. As a result, fire requires a designer to exercise a duty of care and to assess and advise upon all possible fire risks. New fire safety rules affecting most non-domestic buildings in England and Wales came into force on the 1st of October 2006. The Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order 2005 underlines the switch from fire protection to fire prevention, and the foundation to this is a new emphasis on fire risk assessment. The new approved Document B of the Building Regulations reflects this, and for the first time, designers are being asked to complete a fire risk assessment as the first stage of the design process, to identify fire risks at an early stage and try to remove them. An example would be to remove all combustible materials from areas of risk. When specifying products, references to fireproof, fire safe, self-extinguishing and fire retarding, for example, may be interpreted as the equivalent of non-combustible. Designers have to be aware of the risk in specifying materials that are not actually non-combustible. The accurate identification of combustible and non-combustible materials is one of the foundations of fire risk assessment and the elimination of fire hazards. Non-combustible materials are defined by the building regulations applicable to all parts of the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. In accordance with these regulations, the mineral wool insulation materials shown in this video are non-combustible. The ISO 9705 room corner test does not determine whether a material is combustible, but simulates a fire in a room in order to evaluate the contribution to fire growth made by construction products. The following ISO 9705 fire tests have been undertaken to indicate the difference in behavior between non-combustible and other insulation materials when subjected to this internationally recognized large-scale fire growth test. As with all fire tests and fire test standards, the results of these tests must be used as just one part of a fire design and fire risk assessment. No direct inference should be drawn from these tests regarding the fire performance of finished on-site constructions. On-site performance may be affected by factors not addressed by this type of individual product or component fire test. This test demonstrates the reaction of these materials when exposed to a naked flame. The first material is a non-combustible rock wool board made from mineral wool and intended for flat roof insulation. This 145 millimeter product is called Duo Rock. The test is started by igniting the gas flame in the room corner. This is equal in strength to a burning waste paper basket. The duo rock doesn't ignite, and after 10 minutes, the second part of the test starts with the gas flame tripled in strength. It now has the strength of a burning armchair. The duo rock insulation continues to resist the flames, and after 20 minutes, the gas flame is turned off. Despite the glowing hot temperatures, flashover, a sudden increase in combustion which may be seen as fire bursting out of the test room, does not occur. Can we also prevent flashover if we use non-combustible rock wall material as the insulating core in a metal face sandwich panel? This is 125 mm thick steel face panel with a rock wall insulating core. The panels are mounted with the side of the panel intended for internal use exposed to the flames of the burner. Because in practice the panels will be mounted freestanding on site, an air gap is incorporated between the panels and the walls and ceiling in the ISO 9705 room. No stabilizing flashings are used in the corner joints. The gas burner in the room corner is turned on. During the first few minutes of the test, the plastic coating on the metal skin begins smoking, but no ignition occurs.
After ten minutes, the gas flame is tripled in strength. A larger area of the plastic coating is subjected to the flames, but there is no flashover. Some smoke can be seen from the plastic coating and the glue that bonds the insulation to the metal skin. After 20 minutes, the gas flame is turned off. Following this test, we can see where the flames have blackened the metal skin and consumed its thin plastic coating. We will now turn to a different material. This 100 mm roof insulation consists of a core of rigid polyisocyanurate plastic foam faced on both sides with an aluminium foil. The thermal performance of this 100 mm product is comparable with the 145 mm duo rock. The gas burner in the room corner is turned on. After 20 seconds, a smoke layer starts to build up under the ceiling. The hot smoke becomes denser and starts to ignite. After 40 seconds, the first flames come out of the doorway. The fire intensifies, and after 90 seconds, the entire room is engulfed in flames. The test is stopped and the fire extinguished. After the test, we can see that the entire surface of the room was involved in the fire. The aluminium foil facing has delaminated from the product and has fallen to the floor. The next test is to see what happens when rigid polyisocyanurate plastic foam insulation is protected with a steel face. This 70 mm thick metal face panel was chosen as it provides comparable thermal performance to the 125 mm rock wall core panel. The panels are installed in very much the same way as the rock wall insulated panels. However, the corner, wall and ceiling joints are covered and fixed with steel corner flashings. Furthermore, the panel to panel joints are fixed through the panel from the inside. This adds stability and protection to the joints. The test is started with a burner equal to a burning waste paper basket. The panel surface behind and above the burner ignites and a thin smoke layer forms under the ceiling. Soon smoke comes out from the gap between the panels on the long wall and the wall at the doorway. The smoke coming from the gap between the panels gets darker as the test progresses. After 10 minutes, the gas burner is trebled in intensity. The smoke intensifies, 
and in less than 30 seconds, the heat prizes the first joint in the ceiling open and flames emerge from the core of the panel. The smoke layer under the ceiling soon increases considerably. The entire ceiling is now on fire. After 11 minutes and 20 seconds, the first flames come out of the doorway. The fire spreads rapidly. It is now very intense. After 13 minutes, the test is terminated. After the test has ended, flames are still emerging from joints between the panels. The fire has severely damaged the product. This video has shown how different products react in the ISO 9705 test. As with all fire tests, the results must be used as just one part of a fire design and fire risk assessment. We remind you that no direct inference should be drawn from these tests regarding the fire performance of finished on-site constructions. On-site performance may be affected by factors not addressed by this type of individual product or component fire test. This test demonstrates the reaction of these materials when exposed to a naked flame. However, the fire tests do indicate the difference in behavior between non-combustible and other insulation materials when subjected to an internationally recognized large-scale fire growth test. Although designers should always remember the limitations of all fire tests and not put too much reliance on one particular test or standard, the performance of commonly used products when exposed to fire should be a matter for careful consideration. Common sense is always a good starting point. If all materials used in a building are non-combustible, it is more likely that the final design solution will deliver a lower fire risk.